Welcome back to the show that's all about the possibility that we may have lived before. So far we've seen DJ and TV personality John O'Coleman take part in a regression session where he described the life of a reluctant young sailor in the 18th century. I think we have to fight for the food. I feel like I'm sort of skinny and hungry. The question is, what do you believe? Was Jono really a sailor in a past life, or was he just tapping into some other part of his subconscious? Could we have lived before, or can it all be explained away by other means? I think one of the main attractions of past life regression therapy is the fact that it appears to offer an explanation for any of the problems that you have in this life, any of the psychological problems. So whether it be something serious like, say, drug addiction or whether it's some kind of phobia, it appears to offer an explanation. Not only that, it appears to absolve you of responsibility. It's not your fault, it's something that happened to you in a past life. The idea that uh, a problem that you have in your current life can be attributed to something that occurred to you in a previous life, I don't believe is a very good starting point for psychotherapy. It doesn't help you cope with the problem in the here and now. At best, it provides comfort in the form of an explanation as to how you got to be that way. I think that some people can learn a lot from a past life that they lived. It's really up to that individual to decipher and mold and gel the traumas or the experiences that they had in a past life and bring them into this life. In a moment, Jono will be joining me for the first time since his regression and sharing his thoughts and feelings about that naval experience. But first, it's time to see the results of our detective work. Will there be any proof in the history books? Our expert historian reveals if any of the details from Jono's story are watertight. So, we've got James Porter, a 20-year-old man, taken off to sea sometime in 1740 or 1741. The clues Jono's given us have made this, for me, a fascinating investigation with some remarkable discoveries. Now, he doesn't tell us much about James's early life, and it probably wasn't that eventful, but all that was to change one dark night. I think I may have been forced on the ship or tricked to go on board the ship. I think I was with a woman or some other men and some women. I'd had a few drinks. They had to get us drunk, get us out in the street. And then we've been grabbed. And the next thing I know, I'm on board a ship below deck. Being grabbed off the street and forced into the Navy in the 18th century happened an awful lot. It was one of those nice little practices that the Elizabethans left us with, and it was known in the trade as impressment or press ganging. Sailors volunteering to join the Navy would be rewarded with the King's shilling, but you could also be tricked into joining. The unscrupulous press gang might drop a shilling into your pint, and by the time you'd drunk it, you'd have been signed up to the Navy, whether you liked it or not. And it was the main way in which the Navy recruited sailors into its ships, and it was so popular that Parliament even made it legal. And if that wasn't bad enough, Jono gives us some fascinating details about the press gang itself. So your family don't know what happened to you? No. This is really good, because men often were tricked and beaten and chucked aboard ship, and often their families would have no idea what had happened to them. And press ganging gets much worse in times of war when the Navy would often try and double its size, literally, overnight. For a young man hanging around in a bar on the south coast of England at that time, it was never a very good idea. So all this checks out, but it's not the most startling thing I discovered. Do you have a specific role that you do on the ship? I think just climbing up masts and odd jobs and cleaning and scrubbing, but where the lowly, lowly of the low. I think we have to fight for the food. I feel like I'm sort of skinny and hungry. Jono's descriptions of life on board ship are pretty good. 
cleaning and maintenance would have been the work of a lowly sailor, but life at sea was hard. And even though in the 18th century ships were better supplied and sailors better cared for, it was certainly no picnic. But hard work and hunger weren't the worst things that young James had to contend with. And I feel like I've been, not tortured, but that I've been punished in some way because I feel like my back has been whipped at some stage. I can still feel. Do you know why they did that? I don't know. I think I did something wrong. Mistakes and disobedience weren't tolerated in the Navy. Flogging or whipping with the cat and nine tails was the main punishment. So Jono's descriptions of life are pretty convincing. But where is this ship heading? I think we're going to collect, pick up things. I get the feeling there's a lot of space for cargo. As a fan of naval history, I got to wondering, what was a naval ship doing carrying cargo? After all, surely they were all fighting vessels. And then I thought, well, maybe it was a supply ship carrying food and other stores out to a fleet. But then there was another question. What was the Royal Navy doing out west? Well, once again, Jono gives us another clue. We might be going to the Caribbean or to Jamaica or somewhere. Jono's mention of the Caribbean is absolutely key, because as I've discovered, we were actually at war in the region at the time. It's a little-known conflict called the War of Jenkins Ear, and it was fought between the British and the Spanish over trading rights in the region. And what's more, back in 1741, we dispatched a huge fleet of 186 ships to sort the Spanish out. So Portsmouth would have been awash with press gangs, and it fits Jono's story like a glove. So, we had a fleet of English and Spanish ships battling over trading rights in the War of Jenkins' Ear, so-called after Captain Jenkins lost his ear to the Spanish Coast Guard. Amongst all this was our James Porter on a supply vessel backing up the English Navy. How could Jono have known about such an obscure battle fought over 300 years ago all the way down in the Caribbean? And if you think that's amazing, wait till you hear this. I've got a mother and a sister. My mother's Elizabeth. When I searched the archive, I couldn't find a death certificate, but then he was lost at sea. What I did find was this. It's a register of a baptism for one James Porter, whose mother is listed as Elizabeth, and it's located just outside of Portsmouth. And what about that date? Jono tells us that in 1741, James was 20, which would mean the date on this piece of paper would have to be 1721. Exactly the date described. Is it just coincidence, or is this you, Jono, in a previous life?